which is page one, actually. Each station opens with a passage from scripture, descriptive of the station. I'll read that. Then, then there's time for you to quietly either read the meditation that follows or just make your own meditation at the station. And then there's a let us pray and we'll just ask a different person to do the let us pray each time, okay? Good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now remember about the stations that in, in the one hand it, it's, it's made up because that's not the Jerusalem of Jesus' day and those are not the passages of walkway of Jesus' day because we're 14 to 20 feet above all that, remember? Um, on the other hand, it's very real in that there was a walk through a, a crowded market on the way to uh, the crucifixion. So I don't find it hard to get back to the historical, uh, even, though, even though we're a little above where we should be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, the second thing is uh, these 14 stations are traditional um, from the church, uh, essentially from the Catholic Church since everybody was Catholic in the beginning, sort of. Um, they're not all biblical. That is, I think there's one about a woman Veronica. named Veronica. Well, there's no Veronica in the Gospel account of the resurrection. But again, again, um, as you see in the meditation on each of these, one can readily accept that something equivalent uh, would have happened on uh, Jesus' original walk, or at least that the station represents a, a, uh, an emotion and a passion within us uh, for our Lord's suffering. So let it take you uh, where it will. John Peterson, who wrote this particular devotion, and there are hundreds of the Adorosa devotions, uh, is the fellow who's been in the college here for 12 years, a good friend of many of us, and, and a, a very thoughtful Christian, a uh, trained archaeologist, and uh, uh, and the leader of countless pilgrimages. So he, he has a, a, a deep spiritual sense of what this is all about, and it tends to work. Really quiet. That gets you to say Just before you exit, to say the Stephen Street. The pose of the pastor.
Remember, the temple used to be right here. And yesterday we were at the southern wall, remember? And I pointed you to that white colored dome church, remember? Yeah. That's where Pontius Pilate house was. And then from there they sent him to, uh, sorry, to Caiaphas house. And from here there, he was sent to Caiaphas. So Caiaphas house, uh, Pontius Pilate is where this school is. This building in front of us is built today to the Almaria school. How we know that? Where you're standing, right underneath, is what's called the Struzian pool, which supplied water to the fortress that was called Antonio. And we know that this was mentioned by Josephus. And then Hadrian, when he rebuilt the city, he took the stones from Antonio's fortress, put, covered the, the pool, which is underneath, and then made his main entry from the east. The closest point to the fort is right here. You cannot go inside because it's a school. So that's why the Franciscans built those two chapels. the station one, station two. Remember, you have a free afternoon. So you can walk back here and you can come and visit those chapels. They will be open. And then you can continue to St. Anne's Church, but make sure that you do St. Anne. Oh yeah, it can be an afternoon. Uh, there are seven stations in the Muslim court. And the moment we get to the seventh station, that's when Jesus leaves the city on his way to Calvary. And then the last five stations are in the Holy Sepulchre itself. And because of the six denominations, sometimes it's hard for us to continue the station. So when we get to the Holy Sepulchre, we'll decide either you do it in silence, or we can continue by finishing all the way to the 14th station. Station 1, Jesus is judged. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, called the Praetorium in Greek. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Or put down, that any suffering we may have to endure may be fruitful for others, and for others as we, as was Christ's suffering, and that we may be preserved from indifference to the suffering of others. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus falls for the first time. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God. And 
בין ה... בין המפקח. Station four, Jesus meets his mother. This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray for ourselves as children and as parents, that we may know the love, commitment, and gentleness of Mary and of Jesus, our Lord, and all our people. Station 5, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was, a, who was coming in from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it to Jesus. that it was an African who helped Jesus on the way to Calvary. For all the peoples of Africa, for the giving that God finds us lovable, that God gave Jesus Christ so that we may have eternal life, that we may be free from all prejudice based on sex, race, or religion, or social or economic status, and be freed from self-love and selfishness in serving and affirming and nurturing others. Lord have mercy. Christ have Station six. Veronica wipes Jesus' brow. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised. Himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. talks to the weeping women. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves, for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. 
Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Well, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet is without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us pray for those who experience moral weakness <coughs> and failure, for those who know what it is to lose their faith, for those who have lost hope in this world or the next, for those who are at the very limits of their mental, physical, spiritual, and moral strength. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Women who are raped and for children who are victims of violence and sexual abuse. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In gratitude, we stand before the mystery of the cross. Here we know that God loved the world so much that he gave his son to this kind of suffering and this kind of death, 
that Jesus accepted this suffering and death out of love for us so that we may share his risen life. We acclaim Jesus as the Christ, fountain of our salvation and healing. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Then Jesus gave up a loud cry and breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they made Jesus there. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had built in the water. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Oh. 
Lord Jesus Christ, we come to confess our feelings. We come with anxiety and sorrow, with hope and expectation. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you. Lord Jesus, we come to the lonely cross. We see you stripped. We see you murdered. We see you deserted. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the empty tomb. We see our own death. We see our own tomb. We see our own enemies. Lord Jesus, when we come to the empty tomb, we remember how we treated our parents, our friends, our neighbors, our, neighbors, our, our Lord, and we feel sorry for ourselves. Lord Jesus Christ, when we come to the empty tomb, we see the hungry world before us, the pain of starving children, the guilt of war on our enemies, the terror of friends without rights, and we know that we share these evils. Lord Jesus Christ, when we come to the empty tomb, we search inside ourselves, and we cannot escape what we are. People who are caught in our selfish love, our cold hypocrisy, our depressions, our loneliness, our frustrations. Lord Jesus Christ, when we come to the empty tomb, we face you as never before, as the one forgotten, as the one oppressed, as the one pushed aside, as the one left out. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the empty tomb. We confess our guilt, our pain, our emptiness, and we look for hope from you. But it is also at the empty tomb that receive our healing. The people of God, why do you seek the living from the dead? Because we are afraid. We are, we are uncertain. uncertain. We are uncomfortable here. And we have doubts about this man. Do not be afraid, for he has risen from the dead. He has broken through the tomb. He has come back to life. And he is here among us now. People of God, why do you seek the living among the dead? Because, because we feel guilty, guilty. We, feel we feel lonely, we feel lost, we deserve that man. Do not carry your guilt any longer, for he has taken the guilt himself. He has buried it in his grave. He has lifted it to his cross, and he's here among us now. People of God, why do you seek the living among the dead? Because our wounds are we have away from that man. We broke over him. Do not dwell on your wounds, for he has risen to heal you. He has risen to forgive you. He has risen to change you all. Find us all together now. Before God, he is not here. He is risen. Yes, he is risen. He is risen. He is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is here.